When people talk about Strandberg, they often mention ergonomics and modernity, but then I still see so many sit down and play in a non-ergonomic standard guitar position. As a result, I can't help but think that many are missing out on what I consider to be the most important Strandberg feature. In fact, if a headless guitar doesn't have this one feature, I don't even consider it especially ergonomic or a big improvement on standard guitar designs. Yet no reviewer has a deep dive on this topic or feature, and that's why in this episode of The Strandberg Experiment, we're talking all about seated playing position, body design, and Strandberg's breakthrough feature, the leg rest lower bout. Truth be told, I don't know what this thing is actually called, but leg rest lower bout is at least a good phrase to describe its purpose. But make no mistake about it, this, in my opinion, in my opinion, is the real game-changing design for Strandberg instruments. It's the element that the best headless companies copy, and I promise if you stick until the end, you'll learn several things that no other Strandberg video on YouTube tells you. If you spend the majority of your time standing, this design might be less important because as long as you have a strap on your guitar and your neck doesn't have extreme neck dive, you'll be able to achieve the proper playing position with just about any standard guitar. That proper position is having the neck at around 45 degrees. Now, there are of course many ways to hold an electric guitar. Some prefer the neck well below 45 degrees. Other people like John Stowell, for example, he prefers the neck much higher than 45 degrees. But 45 degrees is a good baseline to start from and you can adjust from there. The issue with the standard guitar is that it's very difficult to get in this position while seated. And here's another disclaimer. I can't say how you should or shouldn't hold the guitar. Everybody is different, everyone's comfort is different and so on. That being said, after almost 20 years of playing and teaching and learning from career musicians who've been playing even longer than me, I can confidently say that most people should not hold the electric guitar seated in this position where it is roughly 180 degrees perpendicular to your body. This position naturally hunches you over and puts strain on your right shoulder. It can also limit your left hand technique. Notice how the standard posture is fine for playing pentatonic licks and cowboy chords. But the second I try to play three note per string scales or any type of sophisticated chord voicings, it's going to force my forearm and wrist to rotate in a very unnatural, uncomfortable position. When I have the neck at around 45 degrees, I can still play all of the pentatonic stuff, I can still play my cowboy chords, but now I can also play three note per string scales, fancy chords, and just about everything else you will want to play on the guitar. By the way, this is the second time I'm recording the video because I recorded it, edited it, and then I deleted it by mistake. So if you appreciate me going back and doing this over and getting it out to you on time, please give this video a like. Okay, yes, there are some players who can play fine in this position but there are also people who smoke two pack of cigarettes every single day who live long lives who never get cancer. That doesn't mean that smoking two packs a day is going to be helpful for you or for most people. And some others are probably going to say you can just use a footstool to elevate your left foot and that's going to be fine or you can just use a strap and have it suspended from your body. But I'm telling you, each one of these solutions has a different issue which I discuss in greater detail in my Perform X video. I'll link it right up here. But speaking of the Perform X, this tool, the Perform X, is my favorite thing ever invented for anything ever. This allows you to basically take any standard guitar and turn it into an ergonomic guitar. That being said, it's still another fairly expensive piece of gear to buy, and you only need to buy it because most standard guitar designs suck for the seated posture. That is, except for the Stramberg and other similar designs. For the first 45 minutes, I couldn't really figure out how I wanted to be comfortably, but pretty much exactly at minute 50, I locked into this position like this. And I pretty much just stayed there and it's very comfortable because both, both of my feet are resting flat on the floor. My arm is comfortably at its side and I can get to all of my strings easily. I'm muting more efficiently. My left hand is just flowing very effortlessly because everything from the third fret all the way down to the 17th, 21st fret, it all feels like it's a short amount of distance from my hand. So I'm moving very, very freely, like I really have it on any other guitar. So that's very nice so far. This lower bout allows the guitar to rest on your right leg, and then your right arm naturally nuzzles the forearm contour, 
allowing you to adjust the neck above 45 degrees or below 45 degrees with no additional strain from your body or from your left hand. In fact, you don't even need a strap to hold it in this position, which is making me question my 40, no, $50 purchase, this fancy Stramberg strap. And although I prefer to have the guitar resting on the top of my right thigh, the belt allows for other postures as well, if that's what you prefer. Now, before we continue with this discussion, I want to answer a question I've been getting about other headless guitars. I will be comparing the Stramberg to other guitars in later episodes, but I won't be considering guitars that don't have this feature. And here's why. I played Kiesel Vader guitars exclusively for a few years when I was commuting to and from New York City two, three, four days per week. I'm a huge fan of all Kiso guitars. If you watch the channel, I've talked about them all the time. And the Vader in particular was amazing when I was getting on and off of crowded New York City trains daily. And I also have to carry a laptop, a small amp, so on and so forth. The Vader was great for that. At the same time, however, every brand of headless guitar, I don't care what brand it is, Ibanez, Kiso, whatever, Stramberg, every headless guitar is going to be annoying or more annoying than a standard guitar when you're changing strings and when you're tuning the instrument. So the question is always going to be, does the benefit of a compact design outweigh the slight annoyance of string changes and tuning. And like I said, when I was playing Vader's and commuting a lot, that was an easy choice. Yes, it made perfect sense. But the second I stopped commuting, all of a sudden there was no benefit to having a compact headless guitar like the Kiesel Vader. And that's the reason that I won't be comparing any headless guitars without the lower belt carve. Just about every headless guitar made by Kiesel, made by Ibanez, whoever, the compact, lighter design is going to be great for commuters. However, if they don't have the lower leg bout rest thing, I don't consider them any better than a standard guitar in terms of seated position. Moving back to the Stramberg, this compact design and lower leg rest bout allows me to sit in my ideal position for hours on end. My feet are flat against the floor, my back and head are neutral, there's zero strain to hold this posture and I can get all the way from the first fret down to the 24th fret and I'm barely moving my left arm. It's amazing. But it doesn't end here because there's an interesting thing about posture. Even if you have great posture, even if you're sitting in the ideal position, every posture becomes fatiguing if you stay there for a long enough time. This is why if you have a desk job, it's recommended that you stand up and switch postures every couple of hours or so. And this is another area where the Stramberg design shines. Yes, I try to sit in a perfect position whenever possible, but sometimes I'll put both feet up on my favorite stool. Other times I'll cross my legs. Sometimes I'll even go full lazy boy in my office chair. In fact, I find myself playing the Stramberg more than I play any other guitar because I can easily get into a great position no matter where I am or how I'm seated. So I know that whenever I pick up the Stramberg, I'm going to actually be able to make progress on the instrument. Mystery Girl and I can lounge on the couch and the Stramberg doesn't feel any different than it does when I'm in my fancy posture chair. Even if she rests her head on my lap, I can still hold the Stramberg and noodle away at the exact same time while we watch something on Netflix or whatever. And if I'm being completely honest, even the Stramberg's annoying inability to sit in a standard guitar rest is kind of a benefit to me. I have to leave it in my desk chair and as a result, when I come to sit down here to edit a video or to do my day job. I just rest the guitar in its playing position. If I take a break from work, I can squeeze in a couple of minutes of practice. And believe it or not, over the course of these last couple of weeks, all of the extra practice time has been adding up tremendously. Now, the one drawback of this design is that these corners on the belt can dig into my leg if I'm in certain positions. But again, even that only becomes noticeable if I'm sitting for an extended period of time, I'm talking two hours or so. And that isn't an issue I experienced with the Perform Axe because the Perform Axe's rest takes up the full length of the thigh. So perhaps a Klein or a Canton or a For Shaggy guitar may actually be slightly better or slightly more ergonomic for my personal seated positions. That being said, they're very expensive 
and they're nearly impossible to try before purchasing, unlike the Stramberg. But there's still so many other things to cover about the Stramberg guitars, and we'll get to that in another episode of the Stramberg Experiment.